What you just heard was shot in the shot, shot in the dark by Ozzy Osbourne. <clears throat> and now I'm going to talk about baseball <coughs> and the World Series. To add insult to injury to the long-suffering Buffalo fans, on top of McCoy and Eichel getting injured and the Bills and Sabres struggling, the World Series this year will be between the Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians. That's right. A few months after the Cavs break the Cleveland sports drought, the World Series will be between the two teams with the longest active championship droughts in baseball. The Cubs, who haven't won the World Series since 1908 and haven't been and until this year haven't been to the World Series since 1945, will take on the Cleveland Indians, who haven't won the World Series since 1948, and they haven't been to the World Series since 1997, and before that, 1954. So, yeah, some cities end their drought, some don't, at least for now, hopefully someday Buffalo will win. Well, <coughs> who do I think is going to win this? <coughs> I'm picking the Cubs in six. The Indians have better pitching, but I think the Cubs have the better overall team. I think the curse of the um, crew will be over, but I'm going to say something I might regret. I don't believe in sports curses. Teams create their own luck with their own with, with good management. I I know it's been I know I just contradicted everything I just said prior, but I don't believe in sports curses. A billy goat is not the reason why the Cubs haven't won the World Series since, since 1908. Ever since their last trip to the World Series in 1945, the Cubs have been to the NLCS only five times. Besides last year, they've only been in the NLCS three times in 70 years. 1984, 1989, and 2003. 2003, you may recall, is the Steve Bartman incident. I hope the Cubs fans forgive him now. Like, I hope Bills fans forgive the B Scott Norwood if we win the Super Bowl someday. They only have three other divisional playoff appearances besides that. Six playoff appearances in 70 years. Okay, yes, the NLCS has been introduced, um, wasn't introduced like in the 1960s, and the um, DS wasn't introduced in the 90s, but still, six playoff appearances in, in 70 years, come on. Also, I'm going to take note, before this 2016 season, they have not had a 100-win season since 1935. You look at the history of that franchise on Wikipedia or Baseball Reference or wherever, they don't have a lot of very good seasons. The Indians are another example. After losing the 1954 World Series, the Indians reportedly ran for 40 years. The movie Major League was made about them, how people thought they were purposely sucking so the owner could move the team. Then after 40 years of crap, they put together a nice run in the 90s, losing the World Series in 1995 to the Braves, and then losing a heartbreaker to the Marlins in 1997. But since 2001, they only made the playoffs twice. 2007, where they blew a 3-1 series lead to the Red Sox, and 2013, where they lost the 4-0 in the wild card game to the Tampa Bay Rays. On to the Buffalo Bills. They might be cursed because they have Terry Pagula, but they're still sucking, right? No. In the, no curse. And ever, they, won, they got to the AFL Championship game three times in a row, winning the first two. Of course, the third one got to the Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl. However, in the Super Bowl era... They had a 20-year run between 1967 and 1987 where they made the playoffs only three times. Three times in 20 years from 1967 to 1987. Then came the Kelly Polian Levy Super Bowl run where only one, only the first one was close. The other three were blowouts. And then the long drought where they won their last division in championship and playoff game in 1995-96. Kelly retires where they go one and done versus Jacksonville. They miss the playoffs in 97, Levy's final year. They make it 1998, then 1999, the Music City Miracle, and no playoff appearances since. And no, Mike Schulp, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and the Patriots are not the reason for the Buffalo Bills play on playoff drought. It was Ralph Wilson penny-pinching, and being a poor owner, and then Terry Pagula comes in, and unfortunately, he does not get rid of Russ Brandon and everyone else who do the Bills' playoff drought. On to the Sabres. 
They had four periods of great success. The French Connection era from 1974 to 1983. The LaFontaine-McGillney era from 1992 to 1993. Was, was just, actually, the McGill, LaFontaine-McGillney era was just May Day. The Hasek Pekka era from 1996 to 2001, and the Bridger era from 2005 to 2007. They were great when they had the French connection. They were, win they were winning playoff series almost every year. But after that, they only had one playoff victory in their final 14 years under the ownership of the Knox brothers. That was the Mayday game. Then they put together a nice run in the late 90s. But those, teams those late 90s teams really weren't that good. They had a great goalie in Dominic Hasek. But the rest of the team stunk. It was the dead puck era and, and, and where scoring in the NHL was down. So they relied on Hasek to steal most of the games. Then in 2001, Hasek leaves. They go to a three-year drought before the full season lockout of 045. Then came the Breer Drew era where they go back-to-back -back conference finals appearances and won the President's Trophy. But again, were those teams really that good? I guess you could argue we would have won the Cup in 2006 had they not suffered so many injuries. But in my opinion, if it wasn't for the lockout of the new rules, the Sabres would not have had the success they the Sabres probably would not have gotten that far. Does anyone really give Regeer, Quinn, and Galasano credit for those two years? Then 7107 happened, Breer Drury left, and we haven't won the playoff series since. Terry Pagula is now in charge. He got us Jack Eichel. But it took him a while to, to get the Sabres in the right direction. Well, hopefully we're heading in the right direction because um, they're looking bad right now. But... They got Jack Eichel. It took him two years to fire Darcy Regeer. Point is, good management equals championships. Good management, more shots at championships, more championships. Um, if you believe in superstition and that stuff, great. But I'm making a case here. What do you think? Hit me up on Twitter with requests. Coming up next is a Treyu, Becoming the Bulls. Keep up to 9.7 The Music FM.